Enjoy the Church of Jesus Christ celebrates today the Feast of the Visitation of our Lord. St. Luke's Gospel records in chapter 1 the visit of Mary to her kinswoman, Elizabeth, when Mary was newly with child and Elizabeth was in her sixth month. It would be the first meeting of John the Baptist and the Lord to whom he would serve. From within the house, Elizabeth heard the greeting of her kinswoman, and a miracle happens. The child within her leaps for joy, and Elizabeth is herself filled with the Spirit and speaks as she greets Mary. Now, last week, I suggested to you that the best way to resolve conflict was to have a, well, a church convention, if you like. I know Don's going to go to one of those. Maybe a few conflicts that need to be resolved there. But uh, conventions or what else might we call them? Conferences or councils, as they used to be called, aren't always for the purpose of trying to resolve a conflict like we had with St. Peter, St. Paul, the apostles, and then the apostle to the Gentiles. It's also good to have a council or a conference, or rather just gather together in congregation simply to confess the truth, to speak the truth to one another. And so we heard Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, she prophesied by the Spirit. She was filled with the Holy Spirit, which probably surprises us a bit. It's not the sort of preacher we would expect in the church. But the reason being is that there she was. Her son, who would be the preacher, was yet in her womb. And that who was present with her was conceived in the body of the Virgin Mary by the overshadowing of the Spirit on whom the Spirit of the Lord rested. So it's no surprise that Elizabeth would be filled with the Spirit since the Spirit proceeds from the Son and the Father and the Son, Jesus, is present in her midst. Of course, Elizabeth carries within her womb a fruit who even then was filled with the Holy Spirit himself and by impulse leaped in her womb. Full of the Spirit then, all of them, Mary, Elizabeth, John, and Jesus, and maybe even Zechariah off on the side, there was plenty to be exclaimed that day. Elizabeth sings her canticles. In just a few months, Zechariah will open his mouth and sing his, the Benedictus. Mary sings her Magnificat. And so we have, really, what I would suggest is the first convention of the New Testament church, even before Jesus himself is delivered. The most prominent persons and representatives of the whole Christian church were assembled. Present there were Mary, blessed among women, carrying in her the Son of God, Elizabeth, full of the Holy Spirit, the priest, Zechariah, unable to speak, but on whom we will soon hear that he will be filled with the Spirit, and then John in his mother's womb, who affirmed the pronouncements of the assembly by jumping up and down in the womb for joy. And then there were some declarations. This always happens at a convention or a conference or a church council. We proclaim what is true. And these embody the foundation of our faith. Depending on how you want to number it, there's perhaps even six proclamations pronounced by the Spirit working by the voice of Elizabeth. In the first place, the assembly declared that Christ is true man, for he was called the fruit of Mary's body, the fruit of your womb. This was according to Psalm 132, of course, where the Messiah is called one who would come from David's own body, one of the sons of David's body, Mary being of the house and lineage of David. And so there is an error that is also refuted already at this first council. This declaration, by this declaration, the assembly condemned all who deny the true humanity of Jesus. And another was that Christ is true God. Elizabeth proclaimed, Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The Messiah is called the Lord from heaven. This declaration was according to the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, Behold, the days are coming when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And this is the name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. Thereby, the assembly proclaimed the truth that he is true God, 
and also condemned all the heretics who deny the true deity of Christ. Then there was a third declaration, and that was of Jesus' two natures, the divine and the human, united in one person, the person of Christ. For Mary is called, you'll note what Elizabeth said, the mother of my Lord, the mother of the Lord. There is not one person who is the son of God and another person who is the son of Mary, but there is only one who is both son of God and the same one is also the son of Mary in unity of person, as we confess. Again, this pronouncement is not new. It's according to the prophet, again, Jeremiah. The Lord has created a new thing on earth. A woman protects a man. This man is Christ, the valiant hero, the, um, the man gotten by the help of the Lord, Genesis 4, who was born of the Virgin Mary because he received the human nature, which he took from the Virgin unto his person. By this personal union, the human nature was united to the divine nature, so that Christ was made Lord also according to his human nature, as St. Peter declares in Acts 2. So at this first church council convention, conference, whatever you want to call it, all were condemned who abrogate or obscure the personal union of Jesus, true God and true man. Especially in mind will be a guy who will come along named Nestorius, who would not agree that Mary should be called mother of God, Theotokos. Fourth declaration, the assembly declared that Christ is the blessed fruit of the body. For Mary was called blessed among women because she received the heavenly blessing and benediction. We too have been blessed in him and have all received fullness upon fullness, John 1. This declaration is according to Genesis 12. By you, that is by the offspring, Jesus, all the families of the earth will be, will be blessed. In the Messiah, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Not just Mary, not just Elizabeth, but all of us. This declaration condemns all who seek elsewhere for heavenly blessing, for the grace of God and for life outside of Jesus. For Christ alone has redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Galatians 3. But wait, there's more. A fifth declaration, pronouncement of the truth came by the Spirit through Elizabeth and given to us through faith is that all the blessings of the Messiah are ours in faith. As Elizabeth says, blessed is she who believed that there would be, or that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So Elizabeth said to Mary, by faith Mary conceived Christ. She received him in faith. So Christ is born in us in a spiritual manner, again, by faith. Faith makes us partakers of the heavenly blessing. Men of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham, Galatians 3. By faith, God's promises are fulfilled in us when faith lays hold on God and, and his word of promise. This declaration is in accordance with the word, Genesis 15. Abraham believed the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. So also for us, we have been reckoned righteous having received Christ in faith, just like Mary. Therefore, our, all are condemned who looked for other means other than faith to receive Christ and his blessings. And a sixth proclamation, the assembly agreed that it is the nature of true faith to appropriate personally the blessings offered in Christ. Again, the assembly agreed that it's the nature of true faith to personally appropriate the blessings offered in Jesus the Christ. Elizabeth called Christ her Lord, and later Mary spoke of him as her Savior. My Lord and my God, said St. Thomas, John 20. And St. Paul, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 6. This declaration of the first assembly here, the first church council or conference or convention, was based on the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. And in answer, faith says, only in the Lord is righteousness and strength, Isaiah 45. So we have at this first church council or meeting or convention, 
long before the one in Acts 15 between Peter and Paul. We have the truth confessed of who Jesus is, both true God, true man, two, uh, two, pers excuse me, two natures united in one person who is received alone by faith and who is for you and for me to be received in that faith and for our righteousness and blessing. Also then it's condemned those who teach that there are other ways of salvation or Jesus is not as he was confessed on that day and that one can receive Jesus apart from faith. Which would of course leave you in doubt of God's grace and forgiveness. So it's essential and Don's going to take note when he goes to convention to make sure that they lay out the fundamental truths before they argue about anything. <laughs> this is the key. Always define your terms. Establish what is true according to the Spirit and the Word. And only then can you have a basis to have an argument. Of course, behind the scenes and the whole scene, as St. Luke rightly records, is the Holy Spirit, who alone can guide us in the way of truth guide us to Jesus, bring us to faith, gather us to the church, renew us, and strengthen us again. So this, con actually, conference or convention, I think was a pretty successful one. We had the whole church represented. We had priests and prophets. We had the Messiah, Jesus. We had the mother of our Lord, who represents the church, and of course, the mother of old, who looked forward to that church's coming. All gathered together in that fulcrum, that pivot point, where both old and new are made one now in the church. And so it is that St. Augustine will later say that all the later conventions of the church are to be improved and corrected from this one convention. May God grant us into the truth as he did Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah, John, ultimately the truth being Jesus. God's holy name. Amen.